the year 2028, 18 years since the founding of Aerosoft, then called Aero Games, started off a pirated version of GameMaker 8 and a couple of YouTube t tutorials, which was 2010. In 2012, the company was renamed Aerosoft. Of course, we're not going to talk about those early days of nostalgia. Instead, we will discuss the story of how Aerosoft went from small to big in five years. The date was December 13th, 2014. I woke up at 2 o'clock in the morning, nausea as usual. I was chewing on some gum. I heard footsteps and quiet talking. I sneaked into the kitchen and turned on the lights. There in front of me were two surprised women, both dressed strangely. One of them had what appeared to be nine foxtails coming from behind. The three of us stared at each other, what seemed like for hours, until I asked, Who and what are you two doing here? I said, gum to the side of my mouth. The two women obviously had other intentions, but instead of escaping, I expected for them to jump out the back door or some random window. They offered me an opportunity. They leave and keep this adventure a secret, or return with them and giving up my life at home. I chose the latter. I took my computer, hard drive, several boxes of chai, any eye devices that I owned, wallet, all required medication, and the Lego model of what would become the Super Mega Drive. I said that I was ready, and to my surprise, one of them opened a gap. A gap to a land. A land severed off from the modern world. A land called Gensokyo. This ha had, had to be the least feasible thing today, and... And it was only 2.20 in the morning. If only I knew what was to come. Through the gap, I arrived at the woman's house. The woman introduced herself as R Yukari Yak Yakimo, and the woman with the foxtails ran. Gensokyo was a realm unlike any other, sealed away by the Great Hakurai Barrier, is where humans and yokai coexist. The local yokai, however, range on a varying scale of how dangerous they were. They are. Since some of them eat humans... There are things called spell cards, which are special cards that are used for defense or offense, involving something called Danmaku. Also, apparently, Gensoku is located somewhere on the outskirts of Kyoto, so there's that. I temporarily lived in the human village for about a year. I had to redress Aerosoft for its new home. I slowly learned about the land, but I found out there was an almost non-existent gaming industry. Save for various things that filtered through the barrier in Yukari's gaps. Six months later, I needed some investment for getting Aerosoft afloat. I heard about the Scarlet Devil Mansion. I also needed to start figuring out how to use spell cards, so I went to this magician named Marisa Karisam. Needless to say, she is kind of a kleptomaniac, and she decided to bring me along to the mansion's library to steal some books. I ended up meeting the librarian Patchouli, then the head maid, Sakia. Patchouli was pissed at Marissa for breaking into her library for the third time this week. I asked who was, as the person who lived here was. Sakya took me to her mistress, Romilia Scarlet. I have something you might like, I said, which surprised both women, mostly Sakya. Go on, replied Romilia. I promptly pulled out my computer bag that I kept safe under the back of my shirt and showed her three games. One was about a, about a box creature that was fighting against a just as blocky scientist, Boxman the Boxian. An RPG about three guys saving a land of ponies from a raging dictator, Brony Quest, when Nazis attack. And finally, a horror maze game that involved a guy exploring a mansion of unspeakable origin. Creepypasta Mansion. Romilia was impressed with the first two. The last one just couldn't hold her attention as much as the last two did. I could show you more, and make more of these, but I need some investment to keep making them. I explained after the demonstration ended. What investment, she asked. I remember that Gensokyo had little to no tech industry, let alone a gaming industry, just yet. I spent a good lecture about what it is and the things needed for such a thing. I expected a very tepid reaction from them, but needless to say, I got some support from her, but to prove that I can be trusted and worthy of said support, I had to show her any or all progress of the projects I or would be doing. I was off to start work when she stopped me. Romilia got up and walked towards me and said, One more thing before you go. She, most, she motioned Sakya to get some bandages. Then she suddenly bit me. I held in my screen, but it was mostly the swearing I was restraining. She was sucking my blood. Despite being similar to a blood dry, it hurt much more and for longer. After she let go, she rubbed her tongue, probably because of a copper aftertaste. I left with a sore arm, but ready nonetheless to start an industry like no other. 
I spent the next year developing games and showing Romelia, some of which were already made. Brony Quest 2, Day of Lavos, resumed production on Brony Quest 3 and Emergency Landing, are already in development. A.S. The Day Earth Glitched, Box Fan the Boxing 2, and two unnamed RPGs. It was early into my second year of being in Gensokia when I was stopped by Yukari. I heard what you have been doing, Yukari said, surprising me in my studio. What, about the games I've been busy with? I replied, caught completely off guard. Yukari, unlike many of the yokai or humans that lived here, has been outside of Gensokyo, mainly for abducting, hu abducting humans for local consumption, at one point gapping new people in, so she knew exactly what I was doing and producing. I have one question to ask. How are you, you gonna use it, Yukari questioned. I sighed, with this thing, showing her the Lego model of the Super Mega Drive. Sadly, this thing is only a model, and so far there is no way the Gensokyo masses could really use it for. Then an idea popped into my 17-year-old mind. Say, do you always use your gaps to enter and exit Gensokyo, I said, wondering. Uh, yes. Why you ask me that? Ukari was surprised by the question, yet intrigued by it. We could use your gaps to... <clears throat> Borrow the items needed to produce an actual console like this, I explained. I thought I put the future of my existence in jeopardy by suggesting stealing plastic and electronic components. But, in but instead, she agreed to such a strange heist. I, Yukari, ran and a friend of Yukari, Yuyuko, raided both a Lego factory and several large computer shops. Both locations were of my accord. I took the materials, the other three kidnapped the humans for local for yokai consumption. When I got back, I started work on the prototype. I melted the stolen plastic pellets into boiling goo while I arranged the PCB and the power supply. It took me a week to make the first hundred units. Then I showed it off to the vampire aristocrat Romilia. She was most impressed by the hardware since she was beginning to get bored with the software I was showing before. I will start selling this device in two weeks' time, I said with an excited expression. But before I left, Left after the meeting ended, I asked, Say, are there any newspapers around here? There's one or two around here. The only one I can think of is the Bun Bun Maru newspaper, Romilia answered. She told me about who does the paper, and I left shortly after. I had to find a Tengu named Aya. It didn't take me long to find her, as she was reporting about some minor thing that has happened. I asked her if she was indeed Aya. Stupid question, but it worked. She said yes and I told that I can show her something amazing and newsworthy. I took her to where I was working and showed her the boxes of Super Mega Drives piled up in a somewhat unkempt manner. I showed her the console itself. I told her about the launch titles and let her play the games. The next day, the article appeared. It made headlines. And the hype train suddenly left the station at an infinite speed. And Sokyo will have its first video game release. I was worried when the fortnight ended. What if such a tentative thing won't work? I rarely made plans for it. A midnight release tomorrow. It worked. I was worried when the fortnight ended. Oh, whoops. Very few humans ever went and bought the machine, but almost every other creature in Yokai came out to buy it. Exceptions were Yukari and Romilia, since I gave them freebies as a thank you gift for helping me this far. The Super Mega Drive was a hit. The launch titles are as follows. Box from the Boxian. Brony Quest with Nazis Attack, Creepy Pasta Mansion, and Tiny Tower, a port of an iOS game that he played. The next week was followed by Thunder Gun, The YouTube Poop World, Super Crate Box, and Ari Man and Hari Man's Treasure. Sure. Ports of various games that I played on GameJolt.com. The next year was spent releasing games and incorporating. The board of directors was founded, Romilia Scarlet and Yukari Akimo, and a special newsletter published through Aya. However, this got the attention of Reimu Hakurai, a Miko that lived near the barrier. She was having a negative attitude to the whole Aerosoft thing when she saw two fairies in fairies, Chirno and Sunny Milk fighting over the Super Mega Drive. Reimu confronted me about the situation. I gave her a tour of the studio in hopes of not of her not being alienated and acting in an inclement manner. She already was, and I knew exactly why. This whole Aerosoft thing was new to her, and Reimu thought something bad and evil was happening. Over the next three years, she began to warm up and get used to it, and even saving me after I le had left again Sokyo. By now, the demand of games and consoles were getting were going pretty strong. Terraria, basically a 2D Minecraft game, was released to an extremely large amount of praise. I handmade the cartridges. 
I use a heavily modified pr proprietary USB 3.0 instead of ROM boards and console. I still have scars from handling hot plastic. I heard about a shy Kappa that had amazing engineering skills. That Kappa was Nidori Kawashiro. I found her, but she ran away. I lured her out with cucumbers, and that worked. I told her I would give her a large supply of cukes if she would solve my problem. She built me three machines that would mass-produce controllers, cartridges, and super mega drives. Nidori would later be the lead hardware engineer. Then I showed her some of the games. She was not impressed, she said. Why do all the games look so flat? I was expecting, hell, even hoping that someone would question its 3D capabilities. This resulted in me porting Wolfenstein 3D and Doom along with Bernie Quest 3, Tetris, and Michael Jackson's Moonwalker HD, a remake of the Sega Genesis game. By year's end, Nidori would make her take of the Super FX chip that the SNES had. The NUFX chip, Nidori's Ultra FX chip, would allow for graphics that were slightly less superior to the PlayStation 2, and you and was used for a kart racer or game based on the show Wacky Races. Boxing on the Boxing 3D, Doom 2, and Duke Nukem 3D. My fourth the my fourth of my year of the year my fourth of my year started with me showing my benevolent side, donating a large cartload of money to the Hacker Eye Shrine, literally, and starting a special needs fund. After our Observing Cherno's idiot-like behavior and as a take that to read Academy. I was beginning to plan and I was beginning my plan to bring Airsoft back to America and see if the Super Mega Drive would work, even augmenting it to the point of being an entirely different console. And I finished teaching Raisin Raisin how to develop for the Super Mega Drive. I met Raisin Yudunging Inaba while delivering a small shipment to a place called Iente mansion that's in the middle of a large bamboo forest. She took a technical interest to the console, and I taught her how to code for it. Then she taught some of the other moon rabbits that lived and worked at Yente. This spawned the first third-party developer. Her. The person in charge of Yente, Irin Yagokoro, Irin was nothing short of a medical genius, and I'd run out of meds at the point, so I was loading up on copper. Irin created a medicine that made me literally excrete copper nuggets. My Wilson's d disease was almost completely gone within several weeks. I'd learned much about out Gensokyo's history and started to make games based off the various incidents that had happened, some of, some of which were popular. Then I stopped making games based on such events. Diamond in the Rough was a relatively good game. Awesome dra graphics, great sound, and even greater gameplay. But the event the game based around, the Brawly Diamondback incident that influenced the stopping of gapping in humans for sc practically screwing them over, production of the cartridge were ceased within two months. Nowadays, copies of the game are expensive, and whatever copies do make it to the states exceed one million dollars. I gapped in you. I was gapped in because Yukari didn't want to admit it to the fact that she was going to kidnap my dad. I had forgiven her when she finally did. The fourth year had nothing relatively noteworthy. Fifth and final year was marked by a follow release calendar. I temporarily left Airsoft in control of Yukari and Romilia, even telling them I will go back to the company when it's ready to spread to America. I left Genzokyo to a very nasty surprise. I was treated to a very large Tron C charge. Apparently, after all the years of commenting against the staff of my school, Dr. Cohen had finally something to get back at me. Payback with back pay seemed to be the mood of the setting in the courthouse, at least to the plain teeth. It was a do or day for me. I had little fortitude against Dr. Cohen's testimony. He brought up all the comments I said against him and his staff. Now I face charges of trancy and slander. Although I'm not sure if that counts as assault battery, but you know. Just when I was about to face the music, the end of the Aerosoft dream, was, which was looking to be a giant, crashing, fiery heap of wasted time and energy. Two mysterious women entered the court, both wearing shades in a suit. One had black hair, the other was blonde. They both seemed familiar. The blonde's one's voice was similar to... No. Can it? Couldn't be. Can it? They brought in charts and pictures about... Aerosoft? One of them had also had a... Super Mega Drive? Both of them also wear an Aerosoft pin that was a promotional item for a subscription of Bun Bun Maru newspaper.
suddenly recognized the two as Yukari and Reimu. Yukari was the one speaking. Reimu just kind of stayed there for support. The judge was surprised. The jury was surprised. Dr. Cohn was surprised. Everyone was surprised. Impossible! They're lying! How can someone irresponsible enough to take a five-year illegal sojourn from the educational system be able to successfully start a corporation that big? Said Dr. Cohen in complete shock. The call off this... The call off this case, how about we pay you for... Let's say... Damages? Yukari responded. One thousand dollars, started Yukari. Two thousand dollars. Five thousand dollars. Ten thousand dollars. Five... Fifty thousand dollars, a hundred thousand dollars. Continued Yukari with an insidious grin. The plaintiff was beginning to feel uncomfortable at the thought of the woman bribing off Doctor Cohen. One million dollars, Yukari said before being cut off. The judge, si si silence! Exclaimed the judge, who had a concerning stutter. I was getting suspicious at the judge after the stutter. I jumped out of the box and grabbed for something from the judge. The guards were about to restrain me, but they saw the small tin bottle I was holding. That bottle had belonged to the judge. To make a long story short, I sent off, I was sent, I went off scot-free after the drunken judge was exposed. Dr. Cohen left embarrassed and wore a stolid expression when he drove off. I restrained myself from hugging the gap yokai, Yukari, and the Shinto priestess, Remu. I thanked them both and gave, asked them why they wanted to see me. Me and Romilia had some conflicting views about the way your Aerosoft business was going, too, so I and Reinu went to get you back, Yukari explained. Well, I was going to bring Aerosoft back here, my home. Everyone in Gensokyo can still have my games and consoles. I'll just have the main headquarters be here, I said. The, hold, the old headquarters will become a branch for the company, I added. A month later, I bought out a large office building in Natick. Two years later, I released the Super Mega Drive 2, which used HVDs. Holographic versatile discs instead of USB cartridges. Three months after that was the last game released for the Super Mega Drive, a bowling game based off the Ebola scare of 2014. The game was only released in Gensokyo to avoid any trouble with the American public. I added my brother Trevor to the board of directors as well as Michael Scotton. I added him because of a promise I made him and several of the largest shareholders, but due to the colorful cast of characters there, they rarely ever come. That brings us to the present. 2028. That is the story of my company from the start, very briefly, to how things are today. Someday I'll leave my company to my son, as well as the secrets that lay beyond the great hacker eye barrier. Thank you for reading. Anastasios, Frank Topham, Sr.